look in the mirror Man, you're so dirty Yeah, you look so dirty You were never worthy Lately, it's you Welcome to the Jeremy Hill Show If you're easily triggered, leave now Because this is not the show for you Now, normally I don't cover this type of stuff I did one thing about um, Joe Biden before Now I'm going to do something about Donald Trump. Why? Because I woke up this morning and I swear to God, I got over 600 emails requesting this video. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a, a short video. I have a live stream today at 530 Central Standard Time. So let me give you some of my thoughts upon this. And we're gonna get started. First, I'm gonna show you what happened when they tried to you know, pew pew at him. But then I'm gonna give you some information about the, the shooter and the other thing. So let's keep going. Hold on for a second. I'll put it on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Play a short part of this, then we go get started. Let's get it. And you know that's a little bit old. That chart, that chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Okay, as you see, that was the former president, Donald J. Trump. Donald Trump, I think that's the middle name, J, right? Yeah. So I wanted to end it with him putting his fist in the air, showing defiance. Now, this video is not designed for you to, to sway you to vote a certain direction. You vote how you want to vote. What I want to say to you as a veteran, as a person who served in Afghanistan doing Operation Enduring Freedom, I am disappointed in people who feel the need to try to take somebody's life simply because of their political views. That's not right. If you don't want that man to be in office, then you do what everyone else is supposed to do and head to the polls, and then you try, you know, to get who you want in the office. That's what you do. A coward move is that. That's a coward's move. Now, what's so funny about this, one of the reasons I made this video, because I've seen other people actually laughing at this, that this man, because they don't like him, got shot at, all right? These people, most of them claim on their pages to be Christians. They claim to be um, people who follow Yahweh, uh, Yahshua, and all this other stuff, all real spiritual, real religious. I don't know any God. I know one God that I believe in, but I don't know anyone else who says that they serve different gods who actually applaud the fact that a man is getting hurt unless he's going against what God tell their God say he do. But these are people who also will laugh at Kevin Samuels when he died or say hypocritical things like you shouldn't be laughing at the death of Kevin Samuels, but yet you would laugh at a man who nearly lost his life, a man who was a father. You're a hypocrite. And this I will say to everybody out there, what you kind of don't understand is that this event, you somewhat made Donald Trump the closest he could possibly be to a martyr because this is going to be the catalyst of something bigger. The fact that y'all have already, I don't been on TikTok and I see all these people talking about Trump, Trump, he's one of us. Oh, yeah, he's a gangster. I'm, I'm seeing all this weird, crazy stuff. So what happened is when you did this, well, I'm not you, but when this has happened, more he gonna get more followers y'all he gonna get you help them and i'm gonna tell you something the thing what you really need to understand here 
I won't put it all on the Democrats. I'm going to say a lot of people did this because there are some Republicans that don't like Trump too. But I have to put some of this on the Democrats for the, the negative rhetoric, the, the negative propaganda and stigma they have attached to this man to try to make him look like a racist and all this other stuff that he's not good for America and all this stuff like that. All this atmosphere of political violence, so to speak, contributed to that man wanting to do something to him and wanting him to um, take his life. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you here? You know what I mean? So let me go and put this person on the screen who actually pulled that trigger. One second. I had to cut the music down, but you get to see it. Make sure it's on the screen for you. Oh, I thought I had that set up. It is. That's a weird thing. I don't know why it's like that, but here. Yeah. Anyway, it says um, he's been um, identified as the shooter. The gunman who died at the scene was identified as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. The FBI Pittsburgh field office confirmed to NBC News on Sunday morning. So that's the person who pulled that trigger. Now, the sad thing about this is right here, y'all keep focusing on Mr. B Donald Trump. Donald Trump didn't lose his life, he got injured. There was two people who lost their life. The shooter, which he brought that on himself, but there was an innocent person that was a supporter of the rally, had his brains blown out. This is what they said. The um, brain matter was found on the ground because a bullet went through him. And then you still have these people celebrating the fact that someone took a shot at a man. What about the other man who is now dead? Hmm? Is it still that funny? Now, I want to um, answer a question that people like to ask all the time. What have Donald Trump done for black people? What has Donald Trump done for black people? So, let me go ahead and read this for you. Should have brought my glasses, but shit, there we go. This is what it says right here. President Trump restored funding and increased investment for historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, by 14%. Mm. The Trump administration provided more than $500 million in loans to HBCUs through the Capital Financing Program. Now, everything I'm reading to you is um, verifiable facts. You can look it up for yourself. President Trump worked with HBCUs to protect $80 million in the Title III carryover funding. President Trump signed the Future Act into law, which permanently funds HBCUs and simplifies the FAFSA application. Permanently funds the HBUs, historically black colleges. Okay. In 2018, President Trump signed a budget deal which forgave more than $300 million in debt owed by four HBCUs impacted by natural disasters and provided $10 million in loan payment deferments for schools that face financial difficulties, including HBCUs. President Trump worked with Congress to lift the ban on Pell Grants on summer classes. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Joe Biden promised a lot of people forgiveness in loan debt, right? Or whatever it was, school loan. I had a woman I was talking to, and she said straight up, that shit didn't happen. Let's keep going. Got more to review. Gonna read some more of this stuff to you. Hold on for a second as I get out this, I can get it. Sorry about that. Let's do the research. Let's check it out. Let's keep it real. Okay. It says here, Black Americans are seeing unprecedented, unprecedented, Levels of economic success with record low unemployment rates, more jobs, and more incomes. Again, y'all, this is verifiable facts. Y'all can look this up for yourself on Google, okay? Go ahead and do it. Over 1.4 million more black Americans have found a job between President Trump's election and February 2020. Black poverty reached a historic low in 2019. President Trump designated 8,760 opportunity zones that are projected to spur 100 billion in private investment in minority communities. The Trump administration established a fund to deploy 1 billion in capital funding for minority owned businesses to the Commerce Department. Now, when he was in office, man, money was better, especially for the veterans. Everything, the gas, everything, it wouldn't, we wouldn't dealing with inflation. We almost at the verge of a depression right now with the current administration, okay? Now, let me keep on playing some more stuff for you. Let me put some more stuff on the screen. Give me a second, y'all. Mm-hmm. Hope y'all doing all right today. Man, I woke up, man. Got a little female in there right now. She's still asleep. 
So when she get up, you know she's going to make a ball some bacon and eggs and grits in a little bit and stuff. So I just hurry up and shoot this in here before she get up. You know what I mean? I had to put the work in. All right. Here's something else for y'all, man. We're going to get down into it. Let's get it. Now, so-called HBCUs like Fisk get federal funding, but that has now expired. And even though both Democrats and Republicans in Washington have agreed on continued funding for HBCUs, with House Democrats proposing a short-term fix, guaranteeing an annual payment of $225 million of federal funding for two years. But House Republicans are pushing a larger plan. It would include permanent funding for HBCUs, but it also contains other proposals, like simplifying the forms students fill out to get financial aid and increasing the number of students who qualify for Pell Grants. Also breaking, President Trump has signed a bipartisan bill that permanently funds HBCUs. The bill provides more than $250 million to these universities and others that serve minority students. During their first year in office, President Obama and VP Biden cut funding for historically black colleges and universities. I've increased HBCU funding and I made it permanent. And according to the education department's latest records. What's so sad about, what's so sad about that is this right here. You still gonna have some knucklehead out there? Yeah, he might've did that, but that don't mean nothing. Look here, you know how important education and skill sets are in the black community? the need for them because it used to be where they used to have the black folks you to always have to knock on the doors of the current president and beg their ass for some help he made it possible to where there's no more begging no more getting on your knees and sucking them out for a million or a pill grant none of that okay so before you say that's what's so funny in the black community not all there's a lot of black people that support trump but then you got some who don't like him, and I understand why they don't like him. They don't like him because of how he talks. You know what I mean? So what? That's how he talks, man. It's how he, it don't matter. But when you ask him, what is it exactly that he's doing or have done that is detrimental, detrimental, detrimental to the black community? You can't get one damn answer. They don't know. Well, I don't like what he's doing with this group of people. Is it affecting you? No, I just don't like it. Okay, well, can you tell me the things that he's doing that is directly impacting you or directly impacting any parts of the black community? And all you hear is... <clears throat> Sorry about that, y'all. I was trying to get this cricket thing. That's what you hear. When you ask him anything about what he has done. Now, you do realize when them stimulus checks came out that his name was on them, don't you? Maybe you don't. So anyway, let's keep going. President Obama held the record for allocating the most federal funds in 2010. And this year, President Trump topped that, setting aside more than $360 million for HBCU. Now, as of tonight, we can- I remember. Obama, a black man, didn't do this. The first black president didn't do this. The only legacy that um <laughs> that's gonna come from Obama is the fact that he put out gay marriage. That's really the only thing, and he tried to um do a uh, universal health care that didn't really do too well. You know what I'm saying? But he's they also call Obama the the gay president. And this ain't knocking nobody in the alphabet community, but that's really the legacy of the first black. Um, president is that he allowed um, people in the alphabet community to get married. That's it. Anything else, I mean, I can't really think. It's, it's been some things that he did, but nothing really towards the, the black people. Not Nothing really. Nothing really significant. Making it where the HBCUs have permanent asset access to money is a big thing. It really is. Let's keep going. Dollars for HBCU. Now, as of tonight, we can verify the online rumor is true. President Trump has pushed more federal dollars toward historically black colleges and universities than any of his predecessors. 
President Joe Biden's $45 billion proposal for HBCU funding was reviewed by lawmakers and cut to $2 billion. Although money was cut, Dillard University President Dr. Walter Kimbrough says this is actually something they can work with. Maybe you get two or three billion, but if we normally get a billion a year and I get three or four, that's a big increase. And so I have to look at it like that and not as, you know, some people just like, oh, it's a loss and he failed. So Joe Biden is the reason why <laughs> that money got cut going to the HBCUs. Think about now, everything I'm showing you is factual. You can look it up yourself. No lies here. And if you're new here at the Jeremy Hill Show, one thing you got to understand, I have a very unapologetic disposition. I say what I say. You know what I mean? I ain't scared to cover hardly anything. Now let's keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you for the new subscribers. We over 30K now. I appreciate y'all supporting me. Let's keep going. I'm going to let uh, another Texas dude talk. Hold on. Because black people are the least informed voters. They can't name one thing that Trump has done other than the fact that he said that these guys from the Central Park rape should be locked up. You got to forget they really believe those kids raped that woman. They did. Years. They really believe that. So why wouldn't they say these things? But on the flip side, Joe Biden done some things, put some laws in the place that we still suffer from now today. But black people went out and voted against Trump in mass numbers for the same man. So that's why he go come over here and shake hand with black people and look lost because he ain't forgot what he said. <laughs> no, that's what, shit, he that's ain't forgot. Real shit. Yeah, Biden know what he did and said, man. He know what he did and said. Uh, let me give you something else. Hold on right quick, if you don't mind. People want to know how hip-hop feel about Mr. Um, <laughs> Trump. I had to get this. I had to play this for y'all, man. I, thought, I saw it this morning. I said, this is pretty dope doing some research. But yeah, this is exactly what we feel. Let's get it. Stop. Go ahead, hate on me. Can't stop DJT, and I ain't going nowhere, so you can get to know me. Hated the love of the underdogs on top, and I'm gonna shine, homie, until my heart stops. Go ahead, hate on me. Can't stop DJT, and I ain't going nowhere, so you can get to know me. Entered the game as an outsider. Hit it by both sides, even had my house wired. Time of felon retribution promise, and I really do it. That's why people choose a prize fighter. United States and other hostages held by evil forces. This is war, life and death. It ain't just wins and losses. In politics, cross the wrong powers, be cautious. They tap my phone, treating presidents like mob bosses. Fathers, they won't cover lying like bed sheets. And I am the laptop, while I get bit for mean tweets. In 30 years, I've been falling in since 95. They take it all if you let them, only the smoke survive They try to take me out with lies and now I hear the cries As they all realize they keep the shit when people rise It's 47 and 50, you can't be too surprised I'm going back to D.C. with MAGA on the ride Hated the love of the underdogs on top And I'm gonna shine, homie He said it's 47 and 50 on the ride <laughs> Man, boy, y'all be clowning on the internet, man I got a little bit of something else to show you, man Then we'll be done, okay? Also, again, it's going to be a live stream today at 5.30 Central Standard Time. So I got things to do. So, yeah, check in at 5.30. I'm going to talk about cutting people off. I think it might be something that y'all may need to hear. It's going to, it's, it's going to focus on self-improvement. It can work for black men and black women. Don't focus in on the men with that. Hold on one second. I want you to hear what this gentleman has to say. Let's get it. President, who can complete a sentence again, okay? I'm ready for a president who can save this country. And this is why I'm here supporting President Trump. He's done so much for the black community. He's done way more for the black community than any other president. Can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, what is what it? Are yeah. oh, we gonna be here all day? We're gonna be here all day. Okay. First of all, when President Trump was in office, uh, black home ownership was up over 30 percent. Uh, black black uh, uh, black unemployment was at an all time low. Black unemployment. Keep in mind, I just showed you the statistics and the data of that the black unemployment was at an all-time low. And also, hell, when he was in office, I had my house built. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. Interest rate was different. Everything. Sent. Uh, black, black, uh, uh, black unemployment was at an all-time low. Black unemployment for teenagers was at an was at an all-time low. All-time low. His historic low. He gave so much money to black historic colleges. Wait, I mean, actually, they didn't even, 
There was a time when they had to beg every president for money. President Trump said, you don't have to beg anymore. I'm going to give y'all an unlimited amount of money. So you don't have to keep knocking on every president's door begging for money for help. President Trump did that. Not Barack Obama, not the first black president. President Trump did way more for black people than any other president. I, and I can be here all day, but I, I have to go to my seat pretty soon to, to hear the president speak. If he were to lose again, what would that mean for black America? What would that mean for South Carolina? Well, if President Trump, well, I mean, to lose again. Um, what would it mean for you to? Well, actually, what it, what, it, what it would mean for America, I think America will be doomed. Look at what's going on in this country. We, we are losing our country right now. This country is, is, is literally in shambles. People don't feel it right now, but if, we, if President Trump does not win in November, I believe America is headed toward a depression. I I'm telling you, man, it do look like we're heading towards a depression. Like in the roaring 20s, when it was hard to buy anything, hard to find work. You see how expensive things are. So you gotta understand, Former President Trump is not a politician. He's a businessman. So when he got into office, that's why everything with the money started shifting and stuff, because he understand money. I think one thing he said before he became the um, the 47th president or whatever, he said that like, people are used to big government, but they're not used to good management. And I agree, because America itself is a business, and we need someone that is business-minded, who is not greedy, who don't have special interests and stuff like that. We need somebody in there who's going to run it like a business. You remember when he got in there? He started firing everybody. Everybody didn't want to do their job according to what the big boss say. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. They were scared of him, <laughs> boy. But he was, I think he fired about damn near 20,000 people in the first two months. <laughs> but, but hey, all jokes aside, though, our economy is in bad shape and we keep giving our money to other people but who have their own problems. This is not knocking it, but we have infrastructure issues right here. We have people in Houston, for example, who went with six days in triple digit heat index heat out here because you know, we got a lot of things we got to work on in our own country, man. We do. And we just give money out. We and, and plus, we're a country that's in debt. Why give money out to people that you really don't have no, you don't got no money. We owe people. When you owe people, you don't have enough money. That's what that means. When you got money, you pay them off, you don't owe no more. So we got a lot of things we got to work internally. You know what I mean? But that's a different story. Let's keep going. I think America will, I don't think I will recognize this country anymore. I'm starting not to recognize America anymore. We don't, we don't have leadership in this country. We don't have anybody and we don't have a leader who cares about the American people who put us first. So when you talk about that American people first, what about the Biden presidency? Do you see not putting America first? What? Biden, it's clear he doesn't put America first. Like, what has he done since he's been in office? Besides, eat ice cream cones. Besides, mumble. Besides, have a hard time reading a teleprompter. Besides, having a hard time trying to complete a sentence. He can't even complete a sentence. So he can't even come. Com so he can't, he doesn't protect the border. You got illegal immigrants just coming into this country, and then he had the nerves to tell Texas to stand down and let illegal immigrants come into the state of Texas. And I live in Texas. And, and he evidently has never heard of the saying, don't mess with Texas. Actually, don't mess with the American people, okay? You are either with us or you are against us. And Joe Biden is against the American people. He do not put us first. He put illegal immigrants first. That's who he's putting first. They're talking about giving millions of dollars, loading millions of dollars on, 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 on credit cards, on debit cards, credit cards, money cards, and giving it out to illegal immigrants so they can buy groceries, so they can buy shoes and clothes and feed their families. What about the veterans? What about the children in America who need help? I come from the foster care system. There are a lot of foster care kids who need help in this country, but they are being ignored because we have a man in office or we have a resident in office who is focusing on helping out people who are not supposed to be in this country in the first damn place.
When you say a resident, what, what do you mean by a resident? <laughs> well, resident? He's a resident. He's not a president. To me, I, I can't. He's a resident. He's just living at the White House. That's He's just a resident at the White House. He's so, just living there. Well, who's running the country, then? I, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe one of his friends. May, is sure not Kamala Harris. Uh, she can't do nothing but laugh. So it got to be one of his friends. Maybe Barack Obama. I don't know. Somebody else is pulling the strings, but it's not him. Former President Trump, if he's convicted on any of these 91 indictments by a jury, not by a judge, mm -hmm. but by a jury, would that give you pause about supporting his campaign for president? Hell no. I don't give a damn if he's convicted of 2,099 crimes. I'm voting for President Trump because those are all made up crimes. Those are all made up charges. This man is in his 70s. In his 70 years of living, he's never been convicted of anything. So now all of a sudden, excuse my language, but we see through the BS. We see through it. And I know there are people in my family who did not vote for President Trump. And it was hard for me to convince them. I don't, and I could not convince them at all. And I went back to visit some of them. And they, the, the media and these crooked Democrats have convinced them to vote for President Trump because they see right through the BS. And they see that Joe Biden has not done anything for this country. They can see it. They can feel it. They can feel it when they go to the grocery store and they have to scramble to find change, to find money to pay for eggs and milk. I, President Trump doesn't even have to convince anybody to vote for him because the Joe, Joe Biden is what he's doing right now, is, which is absolutely nothing. He is helping President Trump by not doing a damn thing. Vice President. Well. He had a mouth thing, a mouthful of things to say, didn't he? I don't want to keep continuing that because he got a lot more stuff to say. Like, damn, you know what I mean? Keep it to the facts, baby. Well, anyway, you let me know what you think about this. It's gonna be a live stream today, big baby, at 5:30 Central Standard Time. Yeah, Mr. Hill gonna be telling you about the necessity of cutting people off in your life, man. And some reason why you're not moving forward in life is because you think you got to keep these little snaggle neck motherfuckers, these wiggly neck ass, these wiggly shoulder ass motherfuckers in your life. We're going to get them out of your life today. I'm going to give you some good ass information. I'm going to be using some scriptures with that, you know, and we're going to be talking about it, big baby. Anyway, um, y'all let me know what y'all think about this. And I'll be seeing you later on this afternoon, well, this evening, 530 Central Standard Time, 530 Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. That's what they used to say back in the day, you did. Ooh, 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 ooh.